much fun. I just love the park. You and I should have play dates more often. That wasn't a play date. I was hiding behind that tree when you found me. Why don't you go on the teeter-totter with me, a spoil sport? Well, I thought somebody should watch the kids. Explain you to the other mothers. And there's my sweet little bundle of perfection. Aw, oh, you can call me mom. <laughs> well, how was the campus career fair? Oh, wait, let me guess. It was just fair. <laughs> so tell me about it. What was it like? Uh, the campus career thing was awesome. Informative, yet fun. There were balloons and... And careers and people talking about careers. <laughs> really? Any promising leads on what you might want to do with the rest of your life? Tons. Yeah, but, you know, they, they said it's bad luck if you talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't go. Dang it, Cheyenne! There's a bad moon rising. It's go time, Hank. <laughs> okay, look, Mrs. H. We were on our way to the career fair, but our path was blocked by this huge outdoor concert. Yeah. And at first, we thought that was career day. By the time we realized that it wasn't, the real one was over. So you were supposed to pick a career so you could choose a major so you could have a future. So? So instead, you start the first day of the rest of your life by going to a concert. Mom, it was one career fair. What is the big deal? The big deal is you have a baby now. Which means you don't get to be the college student in the beer helmet say, party! Woohoo! <laughs> It's like she was there. You have to start taking responsibility. Make hard choices. Stop acting like children and start acting like you have one. That guy in the beer helmet was my guidance counselor. As I like to say, a less roll. Why can't we just take the penny jar down to the grocery store and dump it in the sorting machine? Or maybe we could go to the bathroom and flush eight cents on the dollar down the toilet. Dad, do you have a minute? Oh, uh, if it were only any time other than coin time. What can I do for you, honey? Mom yelled at me. You know what always cheers me up? Rolling nickels. Huh. With me, it's scotch. So what happened, honey? Oh, she's all over me about the stupid rest of my life, just because I haven't picked a major. You know, your mom's always been like that. She used to ride me about mowing the lawn every week. I mean, every other week is fine. But would she let it go? No. No, it was always grass, grass, grass. And garbage. And dishes. But mostly grass. You know, Brock? We should help her. What are your interests? Well, she likes nail polish and shopping. She should major in rocket science. <laughs> or I could major in... Shut up, Kira. <laughs> you know, Cheyenne, I didn't always want to be a thrifty stay-at-home mom. At one point, I wanted to be a meter maid. <laughs> but they wouldn't let me carry a gun. want to do? I mean, I like money. Mm -hmm. How did you decide to become a dentist? Well, I knew I wanted to make a good living and have flexible hours. Okay, well, that's a start. And I really wanted to be my own boss. That's what I want to be, a boss. <laughs> you know, being a dentist lets you be all those things, plus you get to help people. It's very rewarding. Those are the things you should look for in a career. Okay, I'll do it. Do what? Become a dentist. 
<laughs> First, you have to be able to spell dentist. <laughs> Tell you what I can spell. Shut up, Kira. Oh, Cheyenne, honey, it's a big commitment. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. I mean, I used to love coming to see you at the office. Plus, I'd learn from the best. <laughs> oh, I'm not the best. Am I the best? <laughs> Best dentist and best daddy. Uh, hey, for the future dentist, go out and buy yourself some monogram drool bibs. I did, and I never regretted it. Hey, if we get you and Jake to join her, we could be those four out of five dentists that recommend stuff. Come on, let's go tell mom. She's going to be absolutely thrilled that I finally picked a major. Come on, Kira. Don't you want to hear what your mom has to say about all this? Oh, we're only four houses down. I'm pretty sure I'll hear. <laughs> hey, Mom. What are Hi. you doing? Well, I'm trying to help your sister with her career choice. Shouldn't she be here? <laughs> no, honey, I, I want it to be the right one. Well, I know what I want to be. An accountant. Really? Why an accountant? Because Jeffrey's dad is an accountant and he has a jet ski. <laughs> oh, Cheyenne, I'm glad you're back. I wanted to go over some possible majors that I found for you. No need, Reva. It's already done. Yeah. Dad and Barbara Jean helped me pick a major. Oh, great. Bring in the experts. That's what I always say. <laughs> okay. Well, after a lot of soul searching and some really good bonding time with Dad, mm -hmm. I decided I want to be a dentist. <laughs> Isn't it great? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you had me there. I got one for you. Maybe Van should be governor. <laughs> no, 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 Mom, I'm serious. I want to be a dentist. Oh, yeah. really? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. wee. <laughs> well, what did your dad say to you to make you choose such a... Perfect career. Well, he was talking about what he loved about his job, and I realized I love dentisting. It's, it's dentistry. <laughs> Whatever. Well, that's great. And I'm sure you guys talked about how Cheyenne doesn't care for science, math, or teeth. <laughs> A dentist! <laughs> we didn't really talk all that much. It just kind of happened fast. I can't wait to tell Van. Thank you. Daddy. Oh, you're welcome, sweetie. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I'm sorry. Doctor, sweetie. Yeah? <laughs> Van, wake up! I'm gonna be a dentist! <laughs> what were you thinking, you boneheads? Oh, excuse me. Doctor boneheads? <laughs> Reba, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> you know... I don't think it's such a bad idea, her wanting to be a dentist. Bro, it takes eight years to become a dentist. She's never going to stick with something that long. I don't think that's true. Okay, she took piano, ballet, and karate. She can't play, she can't dance, and Jake can take her. <laughs> yeah, well, she was younger then. Maybe she's learned that if she wants to accomplish anything worthwhile, she's going to have to stick to it. That's how I learned to fit seven eggs in my mouth. <laughs> You know, I feel that we must encourage our children at all costs. Yeah, when they're six and want to fly a cardboard box to the moon. <laughs> Rita, a child can do anything she sets her mind to. Except shrink eight inches, I can tell you that. <laughs> so what? You're saying that I'm a bad parent for encouraging our child's dreams, is that it? Yeah, you're a bad parent. A good parent matches the dream to the child so they won't get hurt or disappointed. Not every child can be an astronaut or jam seven plums into their mouth. <laughs> Eggs. And it would have been eight, but I sneezed. <laughs> How do we know Cheyenne's dream is unrealistic until she tries it? Oh, you're right. Yeah. I'm sure Cheyenne will be great at dentisting. <laughs> I can see the sign now. Cheyenne Montgomery, teeth take her outer. Hoo-hoo. She misspoke. 
Okay, Brock, here's the deal. You talked her into it, you get to talk her out of it. No way. Oh, yes way, because I know how this happened. She went crying to you because I yelled at her, and instead of backing me up like you should have, you agreed with her. That is so wrong. And I bet you even brought up the grass thing. <laughs> Now this is just insulting, excuse me. Fine. Maybe you can let her waste a year of her life, but I'm not going to. Oh, Reba, don't you worry about a thing. I'm going to brew a pot of tea, and we are going to have a nice, long chat about it. Why don't we do that over at your house? Oh, okay. I got lemon zinger, orange pico, I've got an organic peppermint. <laughs> career counseling. I've already decided what I want to major in. When? In the car when we're at that really long light. <laughs> I want to major in marketing. You know why? Because they hang out with accountants and the word is those guys have jet skis. <laughs> All I'm saying is a career counselor will just give us a little confirmation. Well, I just think it's a waste of time when we already know what we want to do. Dentist, marketer guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe I could do the marketing for your dental office. I'm seeing a campaign. It's not coming to me. Shane, when you said you wanted to be a dentist, it got me thinking. I mean, if you're willing to put that much effort into it, why not shoot a little higher? Maybe like a brain surgeon. Whoa, now that's something I could market. I got nothing. What if I'm meant to be like a molecular biologist and supposed to find a cure for cancer or something? Exactly. Thanks for thinking I could cure cancer, Ma. That's what we're here for. Cheyenne and Van Montgomery. Hi. Hi. It's nice to meet I'm you. I'm Van. Hi, Van. Who are you? Oh, I'm Reba Hart. I brought the kids down so you can do that thing we talked about over the phone. Oh, Mrs. Hart, I tried to explain this to you earlier. Career counseling is not telling people what they've chosen is dumb. <laughs> this is serious. My daughter's making a big mistake and I need you to straighten her out. Uh-huh. Well, how about I listen to what she's thinking and then give her some guidance? Oh, no, she doesn't need any guidance. She needs a big, fat dose of reality. See, she thinks she wants to be a dentist. And you don't like dentists? No, no, my ex-husband's a dentist. And, and oh, I'm... and you don't want her to be one because she's following in his footsteps and you hate that. <laughs> Tell you what I do hate. <laughs> it's people finishing my sentences. <laughs> Look, that kid is a wonderful, sweet girl. She's the kind of kid that gets real excited about stuff. But by the time you buy her the tutu, she's already wanting to take karate lessons. Is that the end of your sentence? Yes. See, mainly, her father doesn't want to say anything negative to her. All right, then. I'll see you in a little bit. You know, he does that with all the kids. You know, to tell you the truth, that is the reason why Kira moved in with him. Kira, now, she's 14 years old. She's Mrs. Hart, you know, we have family counseling just two doors down. Why don't you take a little stroll over there while I talk to Van and Shane? <laughs> Van, how'd it go in there? Man, that was tough. Yeah? I mean, I'm not even sure where to find an organ grinder, let alone get him to take me on. <laughs> hey there. <laughs> did you pick a career? I sure did. In? Dentistry. <laughs> Turns out I've been saying it wrong. <laughs> no, honey, I don't think you heard her right. No, 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 it's dentistry. <laughs> and she told me to go for it. Isn't that great? <laughs> it's unbelievable that's what it is. I'm going to give Marie my personal thanks. Oh, okay. Great right Van. All right. Oh, uh, Marie? Hmm. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> what happened in there? Oh, it's simple. After talking with Cheyenne, I think she could do it. Now, she knows she hasn't applied herself in the past, but she wants to correct that. Now, that boy there? 
He is lucky to be indoors. Well, that's just unacceptable. Now, you take those kids back in there and tell them you made a mistake. Ah. Mom, what's wrong? What's wrong is that so-called guidance counselor gave you kids some bad advice. There's no way you should be a dentist. And you say your 14-year-old just moved out? <sighs> so you never really believed I could do this. And I bet you were lying about me curing cancer, too. <laughs> Cheyenne, those classes cost money. And in a couple months, you'll be wanting to do something else, and I'll have to deal with that. You know what? Thanks for bringing me down here. It's good to know someone believes in me. Just not my mom. Cheyenne! Don't worry. I can cheer her up. <laughs> Mr. Robotica. Hi, Reba. Oh, look, it's a guidance counselor from Make Believe Land. Hey, I'm here because I want to help, okay? You know, I was sitting out on my porch, watching the grass grow like it's supposed to, and... <laughs> and I realized that it's not fair for me to always make you the bad guy. So I'll talk to Cheyenne. See, I'm sure she thinks being a dentist is all glitz and glamour. What Cheyenne doesn't know is that for every guy who pulls a molar, there are a thousand broken hearts of people who couldn't cut it. Oh, hey. Look, I'm glad you guys are here. Mom, I thought a lot about what you said. Cheyenne, sweetie, I think I made a mistake. I'm not really sure dentistry is the right thing. I mean, truth be told, I hate it. They bite you. The little kids, they bite you on purpose. <laughs> and you can't even smack them. It's okay. I think I know why Mom thinks I can't handle it. Look, Mom, I am flaky, and I don't stick to things. Wow. Honey, admitting that about yourself is a step in the right direction. Don't worry, we'll find you something. Oh, I already did. Dentistry. I'm going for it. Look, everybody thinks that I can do it. Everyone but you. Cheyenne, I want to believe in you, but it's hard. You've got a very well-established track record. You've been a model flake. Oh, thank goodness you're back. Where is the baby's baba, Cheyenne? I looked everywhere and I can't find it. I gave her the green one, but she threw that. Now it's gone. And she's pulling on her ear again, which means she needs the drops. I don't have the drops. I don't have the baba. I got nothing. Okay. <laughs> Calm down. I always clip an extra baba to her binky. Baba? Binky? Listen to us. She's taken away our ability to speak like big people. I so want to be that guy in the beer helmet going party. Woo, yeah. Man, breathe, okay? Everything is going to be all right. Mommy's back. It's after four, so you can give her three drops. If she keeps pulling on her ear, though, give her some children's aspirin. Top drawer left. Okay. Elizabeth, Mommy's home. Daddy's going to be okay. <laughs> So I'm going for it. And if you don't think that I'm going to follow through with it, I'm going to have to prove you wrong. No. Just a minute. I just realized something. Maybe I was wrong. Somebody get a video camera. <laughs> what do you mean, maybe you were wrong? Elizabeth, being a mom, honey, you're a great mom. It's not that you can't stick to something, it's that you don't. And it's obvious you can do just about anything you want to, as long as it's important to you. So what are you saying? You'll support me trying to be a dentist? Is being a dentist important to you? Hey, hey, you know that whole thing about kids biting you? <laughs> that was really just for dramatic effect. We have great hours. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Sure you wouldn't rather just take piano lessons? Oh, 
Okay. I'm here to support you. But if in a couple of months you decide to be a forest ranger, you're on your own. Oh, a forest ranger? Cheyenne. <laughs> All right. Like I would ever wear one of those stupid brown hats. You know, Reba, if we weren't divorced, this is where we'd hug and say what a good job we did and then discuss what we're having for dinner. Hey, why don't we do that over at your house? You're going to slam the door on me, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Look who has time to bake since her chick left the nest. Who's not getting a muffin? Hey, honey, you want one? Uh, no time. I left a library book upstairs. It's due today. Bye. Oh, well, wait a minute. We hadn't talked all week. Did you spare five minutes? What would five minutes really do, Mom? Wouldn't that just leave us wanting more? <laughs> uh, Barbara Jean, I'm going to Jenny's after the library. Bye. Don't you want to hear about my day? <laughs> I'd like to hear about your day. Here's the headline. Giant blonde attacks muffin factory. Cute redhead saves the day. <laughs> and since when is Kira and Jenny talking? I thought they were fighting. Oh, not anymore. See, Kira sat with Macy at lunch, so Jenny thought Kira was stuck up. But then Kira sat with Jenny again, so Jenny and Kira made up. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Since when are you in the ninth grade? <laughs> I'm very plugged in with the kids, Reba. And, you know, it's only natural that you've fallen out of touch with Kira since she moved out. I am not out of touch with my daughter. It's just that she doesn't live here and we don't always talk as much as we... And you don't live here either, by the way. <laughs> Reba, let me give you the benefit of my parenting experience. <laughs> I tried talking to Kira, but all I ever got were angry looks. Yes, just like that. <laughs> but I have learned there are other ways to open the doors of communication. I don't want your parenting advice, Barbara Jean. Yes, you do. Because you know that I know things about Kira that you want to know. And you want to know how I know them. And I'll let you know how I know them if you let me know that you want to okay, know how... <laughs> Tell me your secret. Tell me how you get my daughter to completely open up about every detail in her life. I spy on her. <laughs> hey! My roots are planted in the past. Though my life is changing fast. Who I am is who I want to be. A single mom who works too hard. Who loves her kids and never stops. With gentle hands and the heart of a fighter I'm a survivor I can't believe you spy on my daughter And you thought I wasn't ready to raise a teenager <laughs> Hey guys, we're back from the ball game Dad let me eat a whole bowl of relish <laughs> He's making it sound a lot worse than it is. The relish was on, like, six hot dogs. <laughs> Did you know Barbara Jean is spying on Kira? So? So? It's a betrayal of trust. It's an invasion of privacy. It's just old-fashioned wrong. No, it's only wrong if the person you're spying on has something to hide. <laughs> like if you had spied on Brock when we were having an affair. <laughs> Don't help, okay, honey? <laughs> Look, Kira's a good kid. What's Barbara Jean gonna find out? It's either banned, the library, or the mall. <laughs> We're lucky. Kira has no life. Apparently neither does Barbara Jean, or she wouldn't be reading a 14-year-old's diary. I would never read Kira's diary. I read her email. <laughs> 
See, I put this filter on the computer that lets me see everything anyone does online. <laughs> You mean anything Kira does, right? No. I gotta go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, really, Reba, there's no harm in spying. Wouldn't you like to know things about Kira? Like, who gave her that friendship necklace? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm gonna stoop to your level, Barbara Jean. If Kira wants me to know, she'll tell me. Or you could just wait 30 years and hope that Kira's memoirs get turned into a movie, which you won't be able to see unless there's parking outside the theater for your high horse. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Kira's life is a movie. You know who I want to play me? Who? Denzel Washington. <laughs> what was that about? Oh, Barbara Jean thinks that I will spy on Kira like I'd ever spy on one of my kids. You spied on me all the time. I did not. Your mom has a point, Cheyenne. I mean, if she'd been spying on us, you'd never gotten pregnant. <laughs> It's like you were blind. <laughs> if you didn't spy on me, how did you always know when I liked a boy? Oh, it was obvious. You'd be on the phone all day with all your friends, tell them about it, and then you'd write, I love Jimmy on your notebooks. Jimmy? <laughs> Who's Jimmy? You are, honey. <laughs> And then your pockets would be full of those empty lip gloss containers, and you'd wear that pink sweater real low cut with the black lace on it. Hey, you know, going through someone's pocket is called spying, Mom. <laughs> oh, honey, it's called doing the laundry. <laughs> well, maybe I'll do your laundry and see how much you like it. <laughs> yeah, do my ironing, too. That'll show me. <laughs> You know what I think, Mrs. H? That you're not really Jimmy? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think you should spy on Kira. What? Yeah, go through her backpack. They keep everything in there. And wise up, Mrs. H. No one gets a friendship necklace from a friend. It's from a boy. Boy, friend. You do the math. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hey! Two minutes, it's in a week. That deserves a hug. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? Oh, enjoying the scent of a girl who doesn't smoke or hang out with kids who do. <laughs> Have you been drinking? No. <laughs> Have you? I'm going upstairs to get some clothes. Don't follow me. Why would I follow you? I'm not nosy. <laughs> Oh, Kira. <laughs> I'm gonna go through your backpack. <laughs> if it's okay, don't say anything. <laughs> ah, Brendan. Hello, Jimmy. <laughs> Okay. I'll see you later. Okay. All right. <laughs> 
Here, don't study too hard. Whoa! That's Cheyenne's sweater. Not anymore. She gave it to me. What is that smell? Did you swallow a car freshener? <laughs> no. And where are you going in Cheyenne's sweater? Out. Out where? Out there, to enjoy the freedom our forefathers fought and died for. <laughs> Why are you asking all this stuff? I'm not asking stuff. I just want to know if you're going to go meet someone somewhere and do something that I might or might not like. Oh, I get it. You think I didn't check all this with Dad? No, that's not what I'm saying. Well, it must be or you wouldn't be saying it. I mean, when I lived with you, I checked with you, not Dad. Now that I live with Dad, I check with him, not you, right? Well, yes. <laughs> and now you're worried that I didn't check with either of you. But I know the rules and I check with Dad. Isn't that what I'm supposed to do? Well, yeah, but don't think you can just walk in here and abide by the rules, little missy. Hey. Hey, guys. Kira around? No, she's over at a friend's house. Which friends? I don't know. Mindy, Bitsy, Bootsy. I can't keep track. You let your daughter leave this house without knowing where she's going? What kind of parent are you? Hey, Ma. Jake, what are you doing here? Not ruining my dinner. <laughs> you didn't know where Jake was. Oh, that's different. Jake hasn't blossomed. <laughs> Come on, Kira's fine. She's a good kid. Oh, really? So you're not the least bit worried that she just left my house wearing Cheyenne's sweater? Hey, I spent so much money on those clothes, I hope Jake wears Cheyenne's sweater. <laughs> And anyway, we're not talking about Cheyenne here. We're talking about Kira. Kira, who might have a boyfriend, whose name might be Brandon, who might have given her a necklace. Well, I'm hearing a lot of mites. <laughs> so until I hear some definitely's, I'm not going to freak out. Yeah, but how can I be sure? Boop. <laughs> You've got mail. <laughs> Got a goofball. <laughs> okay, Baba Jean. What's the story with Kira? She definitely has a boyfriend named Brandon. And he definitely gave her that necklace. Well, is she meeting him or is she over at Mindy Bitsy Bootsy's house? <laughs> well, there's nothing in here that tells me. Th oh my goodness! What? What? We can refinance at 4.75 with no points. <laughs> oh, get over. What'd I do? Did I set off the alarm? No, it's the instant message. It's like talking with someone over the phone, but less private and more difficult. Oh. <laughs> it's from her friend Mindy. F2T. What does that mean? Free to talk. Uh -huh. Put yes. Oh, I don't mean put yes. I mean put Y. That's the first letter. <laughs> Okay, another message. The letter R, the letter U, R, 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 U, R, R. No! R, U. See, R, U. See? Uh. Okay, right, all right. Are you going to Brandon's tonight? K, Y, R, A. What? K, Y, R, A. <laughs> Kira. No parents equal fun. Huh? No parents. It's an unsupervised party, Brock. That she may not be going to. She's asking why I'm not replying. What do I say? Well, don't say anything. She'll know you're not Kira. Uh, it's all cats. She's mad. <laughs> Turn it off. T-I-O. T-I-O. <laughs> well, Brock. Okay, all right. Now, don't panic. So she didn't tell us her friend was a boy. A boy she likes whose parents are out of town. Yeah, yeah, it sounds bad. Real, real bad, but... <laughs> but that doesn't mean she's gonna go over there and... and do something stupid. Right. It just means she can. <laughs> Thank you.
kids are starting to arrive. Pull closer, Brock. We'll never be able to see her from here. We're never going to see her because she's not coming. But if her friends see us, then she's going to think I don't trust her. Yeah. And Reba, don't worry. I've got a plan that'll make both of you happy. Ha! <laughs> Matt vision goggles? Huh? Barbara Jean, we're in the suburbs, not now. <laughs> you can't go sneaking around looking in people's windows. I'll radio if I see anything. And don't worry, I'm not going to do anything that looks suspicious. <laughs> I can't believe this is happening. Oh, come on, Brock. You knew she was crazy when you married her. I heard that. <laughs> no, I can't believe I'm sitting out here because you don't trust me. Kira's been living with me for a whole month, so obviously she's gone wild. I'm that bad a parent. Well, I'm not here to argue with you, Brock. <laughs> All I know is when she lived with me, I knew what she was up to. <laughs> oh, yeah, like you did with Cheyenne? One time, one time our daughter gets pregnant and I never hear the end of it. Hey, I know what Kira's up to. She's out with friends. Well, that's not good enough. You need to know which friends and where they're going, for how long, and get a phone number. And then get a cell number in case they lie about the phone number. Or maybe we could put a chip in her head and track her by satellite. Well, if you weren't so cheap. <laughs> Did you ever stop and think that maybe one of the reasons Kira moved in with me is because I trust her? You know what? We might have to be here on a stakeout, but we don't have to talk. Fine. Fine. Roger that. Can you believe my mom kept track of my lip gloss? Oh, I know. We would go through like a tube a week. Hey, remember when my mom kept that old couch out in the garage? <laughs> oh. Ooh. I thought my lips would fall off. You know, it was kind of fun sneaking around, never knowing if we're going to get caught or not. Yeah. Sitting there in the dark, the scent of strawberry passion on our faces. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. That's the problem. There's no tension. <laughs> We're married. It takes all the fun out of fooling around. No. I mean, we could go upstairs and dance around our room naked and no one would care. <laughs> You want to? I don't know. It's all the way upstairs. Hey! Oh! 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 oh, but gee, what are you doing? No sign of Kira yet. I'm going back in. <laughs> You know, I'd love to think that your wife is insane for climbing up a tree and night vision goggles, but then I realize she's my leader. What are you talking about? I spied on my kid today, Brock. I'm spying on her right now. Well, unless she doesn't show up, then you'd just be some creepy old lady watching the teenager's party. <laughs> because I don't know who she is anymore. You know, Kira's only been out of the house for a month, and she's got a whole new life I don't know about. Hey, try three years. Mm -hmm. When I moved out, Cheyenne was drill team captain, Jake was learning to tie his shoes, and Kira was just a smart-mouthed kid. Every parent looks at their kid and thinks, oh, they grow up so fast. But I never realized how fast until I wasn't there every day to see it. Yeah, now I'm going to be the one that's not there to see it. <laughs> What? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, I, I think a better question is, what are your mom and dad doing here? Never mind why we're here. Why are you here? I'm with 
my friends, okay? Friends or boys? What's the difference? Oh, you don't know? We got nothing to worry about. <laughs> we know it's an unsupervised party, Kira. Where did you hear that? Have you been following me? No, we got it from your email. <laughs> Again, honey, don't help. I can't believe this. Wait, Kira, wait, Kira stop. Wait. You know, I get Barbara Jean doing this, and Dad has to tag along in case he needs to post bail. <laughs> but not you, Mom. Hey, 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 hey. And we all know what your mom did was wrong. You know what else is wrong? You sneaking around with boys. I know it's kind of dark out, but if you borrow Barbara Jean's spy goggles, you'll be able to see I'm not Cheyenne. Well, maybe we got confused because you're wearing her boy meeting sweater. <laughs> so you guys really think I'm so stupid that I'd sneak off and have sex when I'm 14? Oh. And even if I did, why would I wear Cheyenne's sweater? For good luck? <laughs> you knew me better than that well i used to since you moved out we don't talk i don't see you you don't even check in with me because i live with dad now i don't have to do all that stuff oh yes you do what from now on you have to check with both me and your mother maybe you thought you'd have it easy living with me because dad's a pushover well let me tell you something living with me isn't going to be a free ride and it isn't a license to cut your mother out of your life either but that's not fair well, good. Then I must be doing something right. <laughs> now go say goodnight to your friends. Oh, and tell Brandon I'm going to be sending his parents a nice little thank you note for letting him throw this party. I can't believe this. <laughs> Who are you? I'm the girl's father. Thanks, Brock. Hey, Red, hands off the merchandise. Acme! <laughs> <laughs>